Thank you very much, Vivian. So um, I'd just like to give you an overview here of the tentative plan um, so far, and things have been very fluid. So um, and this is this is just a plan. Um, as Vivian mentioned, um, so the left-hand side of this slide here just represents the clinical science core um, with the various data sources um, being, as you can see, acute and post-acute um, COVID-19 recovery cohort trials, uh, EHR data, and other, other data studies, um, mobile and digital uh, health data, and other PASC-related studies. And so this work essentially composes of um, having uh, these types of data on the left um, added into uh, local IGB-2s around the country, um, represented here, you can see, by a, a common data model. And these little icons just represent the, you know, the various com complexity of the different types of data that you can find on device data, uh, et cetera, imaging. So here you can see this little animation of it's just a shrine, um, as you all know, um, would be able to connect to all of these I2B2 sites um, for both uh, QA and reporting um, throughout the process. But the main idea here is to um, establish in blue, you can see here, a high volume uh, core I2B2 data index. And this would entail uh, basically indexing all these types of data across um, all these I2B2s. Um, and in this blue here, you can see these kind of various um, tasks and themes that, that need to be accomplished, um, which, which could include um, you know, both the ETL and, and, and data updating, uh, being able to manage uh, patient linking through this, um, this GUID, which is a global unique identifier. Uh, being able to connect to other types of data, um, as you can see here on the bottom of past data repositories, so imaging data, um, EHR, the various recovery cohorts, um, and, and, and that's part of the kind of payload management. And, uh, and, and Victor Castro will actually, in, in, in a few slides, um, give you a much better overview and, uh, and talk about the importance of using I2B2 to, to create this type of data index. And kind of the, the final piece of this is to be able to uh, get the data out. And so this means exporting data for analysis. So I'm um, creating a kind of a secure environment for a research, uh, researcher workbench, um, providing analytical tools, um, Jupyter notebooks, R, et cetera, and being able to export um, various types of data. Um, so it's not just the raw data, maybe you know, the various wide uh, wide files, tall files, et cetera. So this next slide um, here, just wanted to, to kind of highlight uh, that a lot of this work uh, is a culmination of, of, of years of, of um, you know, projects and, and, and various experiences um, using I2B2 in, in different ways. So as you can see here, um, these are just, li just just little bubbles that are popping up um, of projects that that we've done before um, in 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 these different areas of this plan. So so we have ACT and we've built the MGB Biobank portal, uh, the Clinical Image Bank and how to represent image data in ITB2, uh, the COVID Biobank portal, uh, which highlights the analytical capabilities of ITB2 and being able to uh, export. Um, the data in usable ways. Uh, we also have the data lake for device uh, for digital and device data project, which um, entails being able to uh, export and package up and move around large big data files, um, specifically device data files. And even the Biobank disease challenge, which um, we've had some participants here and and basically taking the lessons learned. Uh, from that. And here, just the next couple of slides is just to highlight um, kind of the power and the flexibility of I2B2 to create these various um, um, data portals. 
an ontology that kind of uh, brings brings uh, different types of data together that that Victor will discuss. Um, we have the clinical image bank. This is what it looks like. And I'll actually turn it over to Victor so he can just give you a little bit more detail what, what the data index looks like.